Hi there, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Airgun Reporter. For today's show, we're going to check out the Crossman Doomsday Bug Out Kit. This colorful box contains an old favorite for many air gunners, plus a bunch of other goodies. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Inside the colorfully illustrated box, the Crossman Bug Out Kit contains the following items. A small nylon backpack with adjustable straps, with enough storage space for the contents of the kit, plus a few extra items, giving you grab-and-go convenience. Here we have a water bottle that holds exactly 20 ounces of your favorite liquid refreshment. Next is a Curad branded first aid kit with gauze pads, antiseptic wipes, and bandages in several sizes. A 175 count tin of Crossman pointed pellets, which by the way, I'll be using for my testing. There's also a package of 20 Crossman varmint paper targets, the owner's manual, and last but most importantly, the 22 caliber single shot Crossman model 2289G backpacker multi-pump carbine. The mechanical platform of the 2289G is almost identical to the Crossman models 1377 and 1322 pellet pistols. Where the original backpacker sported a 14-inch rifled barrel, the reintroduction of the model for 2012 now has a 12-inch barrel. The overall length, including the model 1399 removable stock, is 28 inches and weighs in at just 2 pounds. Without the stock, it measures in at just about 16 inches. To attach the stock, simply slide it into place until the spring-loaded pin engages. To remove it, depress the pin and pull it off. There is a very small amount of play once the stock is attached, but overall it's a solid fit. The metal frame still retains a threaded post on each side of the pistol grips, a nice feature I'm sure all you modders out there will appreciate. Like the original model, you can't mount the scope on the plastic breech, but the beauty of this platform is that you can buy an aftermarket steel breech with a dovetail for optics. Where the original backpacker had a fiber optic front sight, the new model has a fixed blade. On the rear is Crossman's traditional sight, which is adjustable for windage and elevation, and reversible for the option of an aperture or traditional notch. Before the crony testing, I warmed up the backpacker by taking a few shots. The gun seemed well lubricated from the factory, but out of good practice, I put two drops of Crossman Pellgun oil inside the chamber. The recommended amount of pumps per shot with this gun is between 3 and 10. The air is a bit thinner here on the Catskill Mountains, and I'm about 1800 feet above sea level. Therefore, I pumped up the gun 12 times for each crony shot, adding a little compensation for the atmosphere. In my 10 shot test, I got a low velocity reading of 474 feet per second, a high of 488, an average of 482, an extreme spread of 13.5 feet per second, and a standard deviation of only 3.7. For the accuracy testing, I used those varmint targets included with the bug out kit. They each have two sight in areas which is convenient for me because I don't have to set up multiple targets. I set them out to 35 feet and pumped up the gun 10 times for each shot.
It seems that the backpacker and those crossbin field hunting pellets are a great combination. Definitely good marks for out-of-the-box accuracy considering these dime-sized groups with open sights. If you're gonna pump up your gun over 500 times in a couple of hours like I did, I recommend wearing a shooting glove because the pump handle is textured and might cause blisters if you don't have tough skin. The Model 2289G's trigger behaves much like other crossbin guns on the same platform, and it takes some practice to discover the breakpoint. What's nice is that you can practice your trigger pull without having to pump up the gun. Just cock the bolt and disengage the safety like I did here for the testing. After five pulls on the trigger gauge, I got an average of three pounds, 14 ounces, a number which in my experience will decrease over time as the gun breaks in. For the sound testing, I pumped up the backpacker 10 times and used the crossbin hunting pellets. The report does have a good snap to it, depending on your point of observation as the gun is fired. From a shooter's perspective and my sound pressure meter three feet from the muzzle, I got a maximum reading of 95.6 decibels. In my opinion, I would consider the gun backyard friendly. Okay, so when the undead army from New Jersey attacks, I want a few more items in my bug out kit. Grenades, shotgun, pistol, machete, rifle, and Twizzlers. The Crossbin 2289G's accuracy and performance was excellent using those pointed pellets, with a low standard deviation between shots once the gun was warmed up a bit. With an average of 482 feet per second and 7.4 foot-pounds at the muzzle, I'd recommend the backpacker for mostly target shooting and plinking. But if you're a good shot with this air gun and you can get to within, say, 20 or 30 feet of a squirrel, you're going to put meat on the campfire. Also, this small backpack can hold a few more important items, such as a survival knife or a folding knife, a box of matches, an emergency blanket, a flashlight, some trailblazing ribbon, high protein snacks, any important medication that you might need, and a cell phone. Yes, it's important to carry a cell phone with you, but don't rely completely on technology to get you out of danger. Remember, the two most important things you can carry with you into the field is your experience and your common sense. For Air Gun Reporter, my name is Paul Capello. Until next time, shoot safe and have fun. Ooh, beef jerky. Sichuan ginger, this stuff is so good. Ah, love it. Please remember folks, air guns are not toys. Even the smallest calibers can cause serious harm if not used properly. And you should never, under any circumstance, point an air gun at another person. Parents, if you teach your children to shoot responsibly, they will have a lifetime of air gun enjoyment.